to be joined here in the booth by the Brewers uh, scouting director, amateur scouting director, the man who handles the draft, Bruce Sy. Oh, yeah. Great to have you with us. Always great being here, B.A. Big time. Rock. Good, good to be here. Big time of the year for you, huh? Yeah, it's, again, it's a culmination of all of our scouts, uh, hard work, and going out, uh, you know, thousands and thousands of miles of driving and a lot of, you know, early morning flights and a lot of communication, and uh, it's all uh, coming together here this week. How have the uh, meetings been going here at Miller Park? I mean, you got all your cross checkers, all your scouts. I mean, yeah. do they get in there and they start fighting for their guy that they like, or walk us through that whole process? Yeah, you can sense it. I mean, you know, you know when uh, they're they're feeling pretty good about a player. Um, I don't, you know, there's not. You don't have to come in and fight. All you got to do is just show passion, mm -hmm. know, know the player, talk about the player, know his tools, know know his makeup, his instincts, and. Uh, uh, it catches our our ears and our antennas go up when they do that. What do you anticipate? I mean, we've uh, we've heard that the draft this year is filled with pretty good pitching. Yeah. Uh, is that pretty much the case? Yeah, I mean, it's it's the majority of it is pitching, but you know, there there's going to be some pretty good athletic players and a pretty couple pretty good position players that uh, I think uh, we'll have opportunities for in the first few rounds. So uh, we're just uh, lining up the board. Uh, we'll take what comes to us, and uh, we feel pretty good, actually real good about the possibilities. Sitting here with Bruce Side, who will embark on the amateur draft coming up this week, Thursday. The uh, draft begins. The Brewers actually have, correct me if I'm wrong here, three of the top 50 draft picks right, this right. year. So yeah. that's a little bit different story than last year, and it's yeah. a little bit different kind of talent and player that you're having to evaluate. Yeah, I think, well, I mean, I think last year we were fortunate to uh, have the player get to us in Devin Williams. So, uh, uh, but this year with three picks before 54 um, and the way the board's lining up, I think uh, we're going to add some pretty, pretty good talent in the system, be it uh, either pitchers or position players. Uh, Bruce Side uh, and his uh, team will be holed up upstairs. The Astros have the first pick. See the Minnesota Twins will pick number five and then the Brewers first pick is number 12. So tell us as you start to watch these picks go go by. I mean you obviously have how many guys that you have your eye on that you think will get to number 12 and then how does that change as uh, the draft order uh, drops. Well we've done a lot of work on that stuff and uh, we sit there and, and look at it all day and uh, as the board is right now we're we're we probably are pretty settled. And uh, we do feel there's a, a good chance a couple of them will get to us uh, uh, in the top echelon that we're, we're looking at. Um, and there's a chance a couple others will, will go in front of us. But uh, I think with our first pick, uh, uh, I'm, I'm feeling pretty good about uh, the possibilities. Yeah, who's that going to be, Bruce? Uh, <laughs> I, I'll let you know on uh, Thursday night. Just kidding. <laughs> he's, uh, he's, got his, uh, he's got his order ready. It's, I guess it, it's kind of like a... Like a you know an, an infielder, you have all these scenarios. If I get the ball here, I'm going to this base. And I love some of your draft stories from from years past and guys that you've been able to sign because uh, it's not just drafting them; right. it's signing them. And yeah. there's another game that uh, that involves as well. Yeah, well, I mean, you look on this field uh, in this starting lineup from 2009, and uh, there's Chris Davis in left field, who was our seventh rounder. And there's Scooter Jeanette, who uh, was a 16th rounder, signed by Tim McElvain, our scout, who's now a cross checker for us. Um, you know, Josh Belofsky was our scout for Chris Davis, and he had passion for him. All of our cross checkers basically saw him. And he was uh, not a, you know, he was an unheralded guy out of Cal State Fullerton. And, uh, but he saw enough in it, and I went and saw him, and, you know, we came into the draft room, and we knew he had power. Uh, he didn't, he only really played his junior year at Cal State Fullerton. But you know Josh kept saying this guy can hit this guy's got power and our other scouts went and saw him and, and basically said the same thing. So uh, you know and here he is today helping us uh, you know be productive at the major league level. And the Scooter Jeanette story obviously is one that's been told a few times and mm -hmm. and I had Timmy in the home you know up until the last day of the signing period and uh, 
he just became part of the family there. And then they finally <laughs> said, hey, we're going to sign just to get you out of the house. Yeah, but uh, nice. yeah. good story. Here he is today. And you have an ACT sp spy, right? You found out you didn't do, take the ACTs. You're not going to college. <laughs> he, did, he, did, he did great work yeah. on knowing what he wanted to <laughs> Called do. Called his bluff. Yeah. Yes. That was the ultimate scouts mic drop moment. Right. I'm going to Florida State, said Scooter Jeanette. I don't, we don't think you are, actually. Yeah, Timmy <laughs> said he's going to the school of MLB. <laughs> nice. You know, the, uh, the Major League Baseball draft is so much different than, you know, football and basketball because, you know, those sports, they draft for immediate need. That's right. not necessarily the case in Major League Baseball. Now, you know, and this is something that people kind of, you know, have to understand a little bit. The knowledgeable ones do. You don't draft for immediate need because, if you know, if you're drafting for immediate need, you may miss out on what could be a really premier player down the road. So... You, know, you just you just got to take the best player that you feel has the, the most impact to help this team because it's going to be two, three, four, five years down the road before right. they get here anyway. So you just let them you be patient. You let them develop. And as we've done with with many of our draft picks in recent years, you can see the the patience that we, we put into these guys, the the the, the uh, training that they're getting at the minor league level. And uh, it's it's starting to really show at the upper levels of our system. And a lot of young good players at the lower level. You were, t you were telling us you got some all stars down in the minor leagues. And we, we talk yeah. about the minor leagues every night, and some of these guys have really put together good seasons. Man, I tell you, they, you know, it, you, you hope for these guys to come out and have good seasons, but up to this point, it's been really, really good. I mean, we had eight all stars at our uh, AA affiliate in Huntsville. They clinched the championship of the Southern League mm -hmm. here uh, last night. Uh, we had four all stars at. at I mean, they've only picked two teams so far out of these uh, two leagues from our four affiliates, mm -hmm. and we've got 12 all stars, and uh, four of them uh, are at the Florida State League, and and I think there's a couple more that weren't recognized that probably should have been. Jorge Lopez being one, he's a, he's he's pretty good down there in the Florida State League, 21 years old. I'm pitcher. gonna I'm gonna brag on you a little bit and give you an opportunity here because we sat here a couple of years ago as Mauer hits one sharply through. A base hit Dozier on his way to third. And the Twins with two on now runners at the corners back to back singles with one out in Willingham coming up. But yeah, I'm going to I'm going to brag on you a little bit here Bruce because uh, we sat here with a first round pick your first pick uh, that particular year a catcher who had hardly played big fella. Clint Coulter. Oh yeah. He had hardly yeah. played and uh, I think there was a lot of concern there about what kind of player he was going to be and you sat here and you told us this guy it's going to take a while there's going to be some development there. He hasn't played much and he is going off yeah. at uh, in single leg Wisconsin right, right now right. for the Timber Rattlers. Well I mean it's got to make know, you feel good. Well I, you just have to understand that these kids are young they're human beings you know they're getting into uh, situations where they've never. Now Willingham sends one deep left center and that's not coming back. So Josh Willingham a three run home run off Gallardo. And a quick strike for the twins. They now lead it. A 4 1 game on the fourth home run by Willingham. And picked on a first pitch fastball pretty straight by Yo right down the middle of the plate. Actually slider my mistake tried to throw a slider early in the count. He hung it left it down in the middle of the plate and Willingham who's been very patient and picky at the plate jumping on the first pitch and driving it out of here. A home run swing sending one into the Brewers bullpen and it's 4 1 Minnesota extends his hitting streak to seven games. So but uh, Bruce just getting back to uh, Coulter specifically and then you know the method of your madness I guess when you're drafting some of these guys especially high school guys. Well with him it was just you know he was big and strong and uh, you know bat speed uh, power arm strength you know tools and and you know what it just he's a good makeup kid if not great makeup kid. So you put all that together and you know it takes time especially for some kids that come from the colder weather areas and um, we saw the potential to really hit and hit with some good power and uh, and he's showing it and he's, he's, he's got good plate discipline too. Mm -hmm. So you know when you get a kid that you feel has those qualities to them you know you, you, you jump on it and he, he's 
he's the kind of guy that you know is taken to it and he, nothing he's no fear in his game so you know that add that to his abilities and you know it's exciting still a ways to go but in the right direction yeah. visiting with Bruce side who uh, will head up the uh, amateur draft coming up this week and a lot of names out there a lot of players that they're pouring through as Gallardo that's a foul tip a foul ball off the bat of Arcia and the count is no balls and two strikes so uh, Bruce just give us kind of what the plan is for the rest of the week we're sitting here on Tuesday night what's the rest yeah. of the week going to be like for you uh, no sleep and just think about the names uh, no it's I think we're we're kind of at the point where we're we're ready to make this thing happen and this is like your World Series coming up right I mean you yeah. get fired yeah. up you work all season long and right after the draft is over this year you start working on next year's draft yeah I mean right away there's showcases and uh, I'll go see some of the our affiliates and uh, but there's showcases uh, in Cary North Carolina and uh, all throughout the country California has a big one at the end of the summer um, but the next couple of days is you know really we're we're locked in we're locked in we we're kind of you know looking at the board to see how possibly it could fall in the first uh, few picks for us and um, you know I, like I said I, I, I really like the possibilities of this draft as far as the kids that we will be sending out uh, next month the other scouting directors you I mean you communicate with each other is it kind of like you're playing poker you don't want to show your hand or How's that work well, out? I think you got to be a little careful. I mean, we're all we're all in this together. You know, we're all at the same games a lot of the time, but uh, you know, you got to be careful. You know, the guys that are in front of you. You know, sometimes you, you'd like to know who, who they're thinking of, and sometimes that information does does leak a little bit. But uh, at the same time, um, you know, our draft is our draft. I'm, I'm not you know willing to you know put out there who uh, we right. have interest in. That's why you're not going to tell us, no. right? <laughs> Nobody's watching, Bruce. If you come to the, the post-draft media <laughs> session, then you'll find out who he took. Yeah. And that'll be uh, that'll certainly be something we look uh, forward to doing. And we usually have the first rounders up here to yeah, chat with yeah, them, but yeah. it's more than just they get the headlines, but it's so much more than that. And most of the big leaguers are not first rounders. Giovanna Gallardo, for example, a second round second pick. Second round pick, right? I saw where Greg Vaughn is going to represent the Brewers. At yeah, the table very, at the uh, MLB network. Everyone studios. is excited about that. He's a very likable guy, very well-known guy here in Milwaukee, and uh, it's a great presence for us in uh, at the studios at MLB. He really doesn't have. And Scott Martin's is going to go represent us too. It's, okay, this is the second or third time he's going. So there's uh, no chance Greg's going to mess the names up, right? You're going to. No. Uh, you got a couple of procedures in place. Yeah, he'll do good. <laughs> he'll do fine. <laughs> Little soft liner, Jeanette is there, and that will end the inning. Bruce, thanks for your time. Always Best a pleasure, luck. man. It's always PA great work. Appreciate I know it. it, Rock. Do always good. great seeing. You. Do good. Thanks a lot. Have fun. Yeah. Bruce, I got a big week coming up. He'll be heading up the amateur draft starting Thursday.